Hello. Hey everyone, welcome to Theory Land. We have Kay here to talk about a complete characterization of game theory to be fair, multi part in front of. And pizza today is sponsored in part by Smart Contract Research Firm. It's a place to discuss about the advancement in the specific technology. If, if anyone of you are interested, you can go with it. Okay. Hi. Thanks, Pranith, and thanks for the pizza. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to talk about our recent work. A complete characterization of game theoretically fair multi party coin toss. Um, this is a joint work with Gilad Ashraf from Bar Ilan University and our very own Ellen there. Um, if you have any question during the talk, feel free to interrupt me at any time. Um, so, um, this is Joel and this is me. We are two organizers of the crypto seminar on Thursday, and we also need to order food. Since we had pizza today, we want to order something different. I want to order sushi, but he wants cakes. Um, we cannot convince each other, so we say, okay, let's toss a random coin. If the output is zero, let's order sushi. If the output is one, let's order cake. Okay, but Joao is not here today, so, we decide to do it like remotely. We run a two-party coin toss protocol. So um, in this protocol, I first put a random bit in a locked box. It's locked and I put it on the blockchain. So here you can just think of this blockchain as a public bulletin board or a broadcast channel. So after I put this locked box on the blockchain, everyone sees it. And Joel does the same thing. He puts his random bit into a lock box and put that on the blockchain. Then after both lock box are on the blockchain, we each open our bit just with the key, open the lock and show you the bit. Let's say my bit is one and Joel's bit is zero. So the output of this protocol would be the XOR of our random bit, so it's one. So, okay, Joel wins, we order cake. Um, but I really want to order sushi for this week. I don't want to eat cake because we had it last week. So um, after I saw, I can just wait. I saw Joel's bit is zero. I say, okay, if I open my bit, it's going to be cake. I don't want to open it anymore. What happens then? So if I does not follow the protocol and does not open my bit, the output would just automatically be one. I just automatically lose and draw wings. We still order cakes. So this is the famous Blom's coin toss protocol back to 1983. This protocol guarantees that a strategic player like me cannot benefit myself by deviating from the protocol. So um, let's turn to the coin toss protocol. Uh, in a toy cost protocol, we just want our goal is to toss a uniformly random coin. So for the correctness, we want that if everyone just behave honestly, we want a uniformly random coin. And we also want to guarantee fairness. The traditional fairness notion considered in crypto literature is called strong fairness. And it requires that strategic player cannot bias the output towards either direction. Unfortunately, Cleve showed in 1986 that it is impossible to achieve strong fairness in two-party case. As you see, in the Blum's coin toss protocol, I can always bias the output towards one by losing the game intention on purpose. But I cannot bias it towards my benefit. I cannot bias it towards my preference. So the fairness achieved by Blum's coin toss protocol is more of a game theory favor so game theoretic fairness, which is a weaker notion than strong fairness, says that, okay, strategic player just cannot benefit herself, but I can benefit the other. So, but a rational player would not do this. So now we have seen a game theoretic fair two-party coin toss between Joao and I. A natural question to ask is, can we achieve game theoretic fair multi-party coin toss? So in multi-party coin toss, a bunch of us get together and say, okay, let's decide the food to order together. 
um, this is me and this is Elaine. So we too like sushi. We too prefer sushi. And let's call them sushi people. And um, Hao, Zhuo, Lisa, Mingxun, and Andrew, they prefer cakes. Let's call them cake people. So we sushi people and cake people together want to toss this random coin and we each have we each has a preference and everyone knows that preference for sure. However, some of us may form a coalition and we coordinate with each other. And our goal is to bias the output of the protocol to increase our expected utility. The utility we consider is quite natural. So if the, out, if the output is the, is the thing I like, I just gain utility one. Otherwise, I just gain utility zero. So for example, if the output is zero and we order sushi, then both Elaine and I gain utility one and everyone else gain utility zero. Um, and, if, and if the output is cake, then every cake people, sorry, every cake people gain utility zero and this collision together, their joint utility is three. The joint utility, because the, jo the joint utility is just like the sum of the utility of everyone in the collision. And um, you might want to ask like, why we five of with opposite preference want to form a coalition? Um, because how Joel and Lisa says, if Elaine and I help them to buy us the output towards one, they'll buy us a coffee. So we said, okay, we can form a coalition together. So this is basically our utility model. Any questions so far? Yes. All the groups together can make a coalition. Uh, yes, but Mingxuan and Andrew doesn't want to offer us the coffee. So they, they too doesn't want to join this coalition. So back to our multi-party coin toss protocol, the game theoretic fairness notion that we consider for multi-party is slightly different from the two-party case. Because now in multi-party case, we care about a coalition. So for multi-party, we game theoretic fairness requires that a coalition cannot increase its expected utility. Here is the joint utility of the whole coalition. And if we can achieve this game theoretic fairness against a coalition, let's say of size T, then the honest protocol would form a T side coalition resistant Nash equilibrium because this best strategy is just to follow the protocol. So, why do we care about this game theoretic fairness? Because for multi party coin toss protocol, strong fairness, which says that the output cannot be biased, is impossible if half of the players are corrupted or form a coalition. But in many decentralized applications, say voting on the blockchain, many pseudonyms are controlled by the same entity. And it is to totally possible that we have a majority sized coalition. In that case, we still want to achieve some meaningful fairness. That's why we care about this game theoretic fairness of multi-party coin toss. So back to our problem, can we achieve game theoretic fair multi-party coin toss? Unfortunately, Chen et al. showed that showed in 2018 that uh, we cannot do this against a minus one size coalition. So like, Everyone except me form a coalition. They can decide the output. I have no way to stop them. But um, it is possible against a, but sorry. But they also show that a minus one size coalition is possible in, their, in some corner case. Say every, all but one player have the same preference. Only in that corner case, a minus one size coalition is possible and we can tolerate that large size coalition and achieve game theoretic fairness. Okay, let's take one step back. I'm fine if we cannot do a minus one, but 
can we do game theoretic fair multi party coin toss for smaller coalition size? Right? That's a very natural question. And the answer is yes, we can do it. Let's look at a straw man solution. Um, so let's say we four want to toss this random coin. Ellie and I are sushi people, and Lisa and Joel are cake people. So this straw man solution that is that each group just arbitrarily choose a representative. So this representative is not uniformly randomly chosen, it's just arbitrary. Like we can always just choose the first from the sushi group and last from cake group. And let's say it's me and Lisa. We two representatives duly with each other with the Blom's coin toss protocol we just mentioned. So this sync in the output of the Blom coin toss protocol is the output of this four party coin toss. If it's Sarah, we order sushi, and if it's one, we order cake. So let's see why. So we know that it is impossible to tolerate three corruption by the impossibility result. Now let's see if we can do two. And it turns out we can. So if this coalition contains a sushi, a single sushi people and a single cake people, they have no preference. They can do anything to this protocol. They can bias the output and we don't care. Their utility, the joint utility of this coalition is always one. So basically we don't care if they do something. Now let's see if the coalition contains two sushi people, then one of us is assigned to be the representative, like here, I'm the representative, and I'm going to run the Blom coin toss protocol with an honest cake people, Lisa. So by Blom's coin toss protocol, I cannot bias the output towards zero. So that means this coalition has no way to bias the output towards zero and order sushi, right? So, and the same happens if the coalition contains two cake people. That's the same. But this protocol cannot tolerate coalition of size three. Because a coalition, let's say, of Lisa, Elaine, and I, we can always bias, decide the output of the Blom coin toss and make, make it zero. So it turns out that the straw man solution already breaks the impossibility result of strong fairness. Because for four players, we cannot do strong fairness with coalition of size two. But now we show that we can do game theoretic fairness with coalition of size two. Yes? Um, this protocol relies on knowing who are sushi people and who are cake people. Uh, yes, our whole protocol relies on that. Okay, so it's already public who wants what. Yes. And we're just trying to, given that knowledge, but obviously you can break this protocol if somebody could lie about them. Uh, yes. So like uh, our, our, like our assumption is that everyone's preference is publicly known. That's a good question. And so, I uh, guess. Uh, if there uh, and therefore, like, one case person and one case person, how do you guarantee that the two people aren't shared with either of those problems? Okay. Um, if one sushi person and one cake person, we don't care anymore. They can't decide the output because this coalition has no preference. Even like before, so their expected utility is one if they follow the protocol, honestly. And if they decide the output, their joint utility is still one. Yeah, thanks. So it turns out that this drama solution generalizes to arbitrary number of players, as long as the coalition is of size two. So now we know that for, um, and from traditional crypto, we, no worries. Uh, we know that if we have honest majority, so if majority number of players are honest and follow the protocol, we can achieve strong fairness. And we show that, okay, with this straw man solution, we can achieve game theoretic fairness against collision of size two. So we know that below this maximum of around half and two, we are good. We can achieve game theoretic fairness. And Chen et al showed that for a minus one corruption, uh, a minus one size collision, it's impossible, but the middle range is totally unknown to us. 
So the open question is, under what size of collision is it possible to achieve game theoretic fairness? Right, exactly where should we draw the line, to draw the boundary between visibility and invisibility? Should, be, should it be like two thirds in or something? So our paper answers this question. In our work, oh, sorry. I'm wondering if this does, but are you, if the sides have unequal, if the two sides have unequal sizes, are you trying to get a one half coin or a bias one half coin? Still one half coin, even if the two groups has different sizes. Yeah, so um, in this work, we give a complete characterization of this question. We first, we on the achievability side, we give a game theoretic fair coin toss against T coalition. I'll give the expression of T to you later, but I'm not going, going it now. And, um, and on the impossibility side, we show that game theoretic fairness is impossible against any T plus one sized coalition. So these two results together form a complete characterization of the coalition size against game theoretic fairness. Um, in the rest of talk, we'll mainly focus on this upper bound. And um, I don't think we have time for the impossibility proof, which is also interesting and involve a lot of non-trivial techniques. Um, still, to convey the main idea of our protocol, let's start with uh, with the easiest scenario. We have three sushi people, me, Elaine, and this is Hal sitting there. And we have three cake people, Joel, Lisa, and Minshui. They're not here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the main structure of our protocol is that, okay, we first let the sushi people choose a random coin S0. Then we let the cake people choose a random coin S1. And then we output XOR of these two random coins. This is the main structure of our, of our protocol. But the problem is, how do we get this random coin S0 and S1, right? Um, to help with this, we assume that we have a very kind secret sharing trusted authority. This trusted authority is like a trusted third party it flips the coin for us, and it always follows the rule we define for it. As a heads up, I can tell you that this trusted authority can be instantiated with real world cryptography. So in our final protocol, we don't need to assume this trusted third party. But to better understand like why we can achieve this game theoretic fairness for today's talk, would we'll just assume that we have this trusted authority. And if you believe me, they can be instantiated with real world crypto. Um, do you have a question or, oh, oh sorry, yes. Sorry. Um, in what way does this not just completely solve the problem? Or can't we just do whatever the trusted authority says? Uh, yes, if we have a trust, if in the, in the, I mean, if finally we do have this trusted authority, yes. But actually finally we get rid of this trusted authority. Not omnipotent. It's only models exactly what the crypto can do. It's not omnipotent. Okay, sorry. So you're going to tell us more about the capabilities of the and It's not just give us the final output. Um. Yes. So what I want to tell you is that let's assume this. Assume something with some functionality, and with that we can guarantee fairness. So. Uh, as for how we realize this trusted authority, it's like standard crypto, and we're not going over that detail today. Okay, I guess I'm wondering what does this trusted authority do that's less powerful than solve our entire problem? Um, yeah, we'll we'll go over it. So, um, what this authority do is it first choose a uniformly random coin. And then it follows the following two rules. First, only k, and so this authority is parameterized with a parameter k. So the first rule is that only k or more players can ask this authority to reveal a coin. And the second rule is that any k or more players, they can choose to rewrite this coin. So this makes this thing less powerful than just toss a uniformly random coin for us. 
because like K or more players, they can choose to rewrite the value of the coin. So as an example, let's say, let's suppose we have a trusted authority with K set to be two. So any two or more players can choose to, re to can ask the authority to re reveal the value of this coin. So if Ellie and I ask the authority to reveal the value of S, the, the, which is tossed, this coin S is tossed by this trusted authority, it will say, okay, I will post it on the blockchain. But if I'm the only one who asks you to reveal, uh, this trusted authority will do nothing because I don't have the ability. And moreover, this trusted authority, so it first tossed this random coin S to be zero, and then if Ellie and I together ask this authority to rewrite the coin value to be one, it will rewrite the coin value to be one. And one thing to note here is that um, we can only rewrite once and it should be before any reveal request. So I cannot say if someone asks to reveal and then I say, no, you change the value. So it, this rewrite should happen before the reveal phase. So, um, and question about this, the functionality of this trusted authority, yes? What if like K less than half an and like K players want to rewrite one and K players want to rewrite two? Um, so the thing is we are, cons so we are considering a single collision. They ask, they act in, a, they coordinate with that, they, with each other. So it does not make sense for a co, for a collision inside to say, I want it zero and I want it one. Yes, the honest protocol, like if everyone behave honestly, we just trust this authority and let it toss the coin. So in honest, pro so we'll see later that in honest protocol, everyone asks the, everyone should ask the authority to reveal the coin. So just as a summary, this trusted authority toss a uniformly random coin for us and only K or more players can ask the authority to reveal the value and any K or more players can rewrite the value before reveal. So when a player is asking the authority to reveal, do they get information of who else is also asking to reveal? No. Yeah, we, we, just, we just like, uh, each player just send messages to the authority. Okay, so um, now let's see our protocol. So we have two authority, a sushi authority for the deck of sushi people, recall that they three prefer sushi, and a cake authority for the deck of cake people. So um, we'll choose, for this case, the parameter, this parameter is set to two, and I'll tell you why later. For now, you can just believe me. So um, first, this sushi authority toss a uniformly random coin for sushi people. Know that when I say this, uh, so now when I say this authority have this coin, so if these three sushi people want to rewrite the coin, it should happen at this time. So after this, this coin S0 is fixed. And also this cake authority choose a coin S1 for cake people. Then, in on, if everyone behave honestly, then every sushi people should ask the sushi authority to reveal coin S0. And the sushi authority said, okay, I will post this coin S0 on the blockchain. So everyone now sees the value of coin S0. Then the cake people, they ask the cake authority to reveal coin S1. And if everyone still, if everyone behave honestly, the cake authority post the coin as one on the blockchain. If both coins are posted on the blockchain, then we just output S0 XOR with this one. But what if like Elena and I don't want to reveal S0? Only how send reveal to this sushi authority so the sushi authority will not post the value of S0 on the blockchain and only S1 is posted on the blockchain. In this case, we'll just output S1 because we only have this one coin. 
So on the other hand, if mean tree and Lisa doesn't want to reveal S1, and this coin S0 is posted on the blockchain, and you guess of what to output if S1 is not revealed? Uh, yes, S0, natural guess, but it's not good. Uh, okay, that's the correct answer, but we'll get to that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the reason that we cannot just output S0 is because um, when Mainstream and Lisa decide whether to reveal the coin, they already see the value S0 on the blockchain. So if S0 is one, they can say, okay, I don't want to reveal S1. I just want S0. But if S0 is zero, they still have half the chance to win the game. So in that case, if we output S0, then this protocol is only fair against one corruption because even two can bias the output towards their preference. So instead, um, the protocol should output zero. <laughs> Did you read my paper? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so this protocol, yeah, we'll get to that. So, um, We'll get to that in the next slide. Okay, so um, so if S1 fails to reveal on the blockchain, then we just output zero. And if both S0 and S1 does not reveal on the blockchain, we also just output zero. So um, we can see that this protocol is asymmetric, right? If S0 fails to reveal on the blockchain, we output S1. But if S1 fails, we output zero. So this is because that um, we have an order here. So the S0 is reconstructed first. And um, so the S0 is reconstructed first. So when, when, these, we, when these cake people, they decide whether to reveal S1, they know the value of S0. But when this sushi people decide whether to reveal S0, it doesn't know S1. It doesn't see S1 at that time. So. Um, the thing is, the sushi people, intuitionally, this, uh, this, these cake people, they have more information when they decide whether to reveal. So we just want to put like heavier penalty on them. If you choose to fail S1, we'll just output zero. You'll never win. Does that make sense to you? Um, so just... Uh, yes. Could we also output one? If, if like the left team chooses something, <clears throat> output output, or we um, so if S0 fails and we output one, then. Uh, I alone cannot do anything, but a coalition of Elaine and I, uh, let's say if it's Hal and Elaine and I, and mainstream. Um, if it's two people, sorry. Yeah, if, so like, um, we'll see later that we cannot do this. But honestly, I mean, I mean in this example, we can do. So this protocol is asymmetric. And um, from the lower bound, we know that we cannot tolerate coalition of size five. But we can, I, 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 so I see a confused face. We're trying to figure out the order. So the decision to reveal comes after the first bidding Yes. Yes, so like these group, they can make the decision after S0 is posted. Sorry, um, yeah, maybe there's this. I didn't make the slides very well, so yeah. So S0 is, S0 is posted first. So when they make the decision of whether to reveal S0 is already there, then they can look at that value and decide whether I want to reveal. And there's no way of course, for the decision to reveal the point of order to connect S0. So like if, so the thing is, um, if we 
force S1 to be posted before S0, then zero supporters can look at the coin value of S1 and decide whether to, of the sushi people. The support is not like this. You should get not have anything that's going to be there. Yes. Why do you want to allow like people to change your Is that like people have to change their own like that's the very Um because yeah, so like with standard, like with standard crypto, keep if this collision controls key or more players, they can always choose to control the coin. So there's no way to stop them. Eventually it'll be there, like some people sharing this protocol. Yeah. Yes, because we are like uh we because we are consider a Russian attack. So the collision can always wait can always behave after the honest player, although in the same second, but after this honest player. Um, uh, yeah. So, so can eight players, so, so, so can they change the value of S1 and S2? So, um, so the thing is, okay. when is it? So the thing is, the moment they decide to so the if the sushi people wants to rewrite the, this coin as zero, they need to decide at this point. They need to rewrite at this point. They can kick people. They have to rewrite at this point. All right. So like the rewrite has to be has to be done before any rebuild. So if it's secret sharing based, then how are you dealing with malleability issues? Is that too much uh, yes, but we can talk about it after the talk if we're interested. Yeah, if, if we're considering malicious attack, there is a lot of details. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. so um, the lower bound says we cannot tolerate five corruption, but this protocol tolerates collision of size four. Still, like if this coalition contains two sushi people and two cake people, still they have no preference, and I don't care. They can't do anything. But let's say if the protocol contains these three sushi people and Joel, who is the cake people that we guarantee to buy him a coffee. Um, so in this case, this coalition can do nothing to this coin S1. This coin S1 is uniformly randomly tossed by the authority and it would be guaranteed to post it on the blockchain. So even if this coalition controls the coin S0, if they decide to post S0 on the blockchain, the output S0 XOR with S1 is guaranteed to be a uniformly random coin. Also, um, if they choose not to reveal it, the protocol just output S1, which is still a uniformly random coin. Then how about if this collision contains three kick people and how the lonely sushi people. So uh, still in this case, they control coin S1 and they can, they can decide whether to put S1 on the blockchain, but S0 is out of their control and is a uniformly random coin. So if they decide to reveal S1, then the output would be S0 X4 with S1, which still a uniformly random coin. But, um, sorry, if they decide not to reveal S1, then the protocol just output zero. And I believe smart as they are, they will not do this because there's no benefit for them. So this is basically why, like if S1 fails, we just want the protocol to output zero. Because like if the coalition contains so many cake people that they can fail, they can't stop the authority from reveal S1, it is impossible for them 
prefers output zero. That's how we guarantee the fairness. So, uh, in the symmetric case where uh, S and where the sushi people doesn't reveal, uh -huh. uh, why don't we just output one? Is that the file is anything on the other way? So we cannot do that, or just because we don't need to. So um, the thing is, if if as if sushi people doesn't reveal the coin, and we open one, um, like I said for this for this special example, we can do that. But for general case, we can't, and we'll see. So um. Yeah, we, we can see it later, okay? So um, this protocol, any question about, any other question about this protocol? Yes? Um, I don't know like what kinds of symmetric you want, but, um, and I don't know like if there is another symmetric protocol that can tolerate the same collision size, but intuitionally speaking, I don't think it's symmetric because in general case, like when we consider arbitrary number of players with arbitrary number of sushi people and arbitrary number of cake people, the preference itself is asymmetric. Are you asking if you have to in practice, like it's you can't, yeah, yes, like, I mean, without because finally, when we get rid of this trusted authority, and we cannot do this, I'm not aware of any people with this procedure. But in most of the people with this simultaneous message, it's a very strong one. It is not implied by any standard model, like where you have a reduction of the same kind of like a previous. Yeah, so this protocol. Um, tolerates a coalition of size four against uh, under a six player coin toss. And um, this protocol can be generalized to arbitrary number of sushi people and arbitrary number of cake people. So here is our achievability with this strange transition. That's why I didn't give this formula earlier. So this achievability result does not only relates to the collision size, but also relates to the number of sushi people and cake people. In this um, table here, N0 is the number of sushi people who prefer output zero. And N1 is the number of cake people who prefer output one. So if N1 is much larger than N0, then we can tolerate a collision of size at most N1 minus half N0. And in other case where N1 and N0 are close, like we just like we just see, um, we can tolerate two thirds N1 plus one thirds N0 collision. Yes. Uh, if N1 and N0 both agree, then we just get three. So we just get four. Um. Yes. So because uh, because when N1 equal to N0 equal to odd, that's a special case. Because yeah. As we can see, the special case comes here because we can have no preference. Yeah, that's a that's a really good catch. We didn't realize that when we first finished the paper. <laughs> hey, sorry. I'm doing it in the reverse way, and uh, I just do it here. So, just to give a better understanding, we have a plot of the landscape here. This blue plane is half of N0 plus N1. Um, so this is the N0 axis, the number of sushi people. And this is N1 axis, the number of um, cake people. And this is T, the size of the collision we can tolerate. So this blue plane 
is exact half and below that, we know that strong fairness is possible. This red plane is the coalition size we can tolerate to achieve game theoretic fairness. So below this red line, game theoretic fairness is possible. Up, sorry, below this red plane, game theoretic fairness is possible. But above this red plane, we showed in our paper that it is impossible to achieve game theoretic fairness above. So um, let me, I guess it's better to show you. Um, wait. Um, Sorry, just one minute. One. I guess it makes sense to show this plot in this way. Yeah, I guess this looks better <laughs> and more interesting. So um, above, so this uh, here x axis is n zero number of sushi people, and y is the number of cake people. So um, I ignore all the rounding issue in the plot and um, just without loss of generality, we assume we have more cake people. Yes. And to be clear, we're always going to put the coalition with more people to act second. Is the game of this method? What do you mean we put? I mean, yes, the like, yes. Metric, the second actor will be the larger coalition actor. Uh, the larger group. Sorry, the larger coalition. The larger group. We'll yes, start. yes, exactly. So, yeah. So, as you can see, like, this is the landscape of game theoretic fairness and strong fairness. Below this, still like blue, below this blue plane, we can achieve strong fairness. And we can see that um, above this blue plane and below this red plane, we can achieve game theoretic fairness, but not strong fairness. But this is still like a meaningful broad range of parameter that is interesting to us. Okay. I guess I'm going to. So um, before I'm going to talk about the intuition of this phase transition, any questions? Okay. Um, yeah, the reason that we have this phase transition is also related to the asymmetry of our protocol. So, <clears throat> Um, let's say when we have when we have much more, a lot more cake people than sushi people, it is not very likely for a large coalition to prefer zero, because a coalition prefer zero can only contain three players. So in that case, three players can't really they just cannot hurt the coin S one. That so like a coalition prefer zero. So that means the collision prefer zero cannot really do anything to this coin S1. So this the rule that if we fail to reveal S1, then we output zero. Doesn't really matter because it cannot happen actually. But if we are in the case where like the number of cake people and sushi people are close to each other, then it is possible that a coalition is large enough yet still prefer zero and they can harm, they can do something to coin S1. So in that case, we need this rule to guarantee the fairness. That's why we have a phase transition and we have different, um, different collision sites to tolerate. Um, so I'm not going to talk about the general parameter choice here due to the time limits. So I'm gonna just wrap up. Um, to conclude, we can, in this paper, we show that we can construct game theoretic fair coin toss protocol against collision of size T. Um, this is the full formula with all the roundings. And we also show that there is no game theoretic fair coin toss against any T plus one sized collision. On the other hand, we also explore other interesting fairness notion. Um, we, we, in the paper, we also give a complete characterization of another fairness notion, which requires that no coalition can harm any honest individual. And we also consider other natural and interesting utility. So 
In, the talk we, in this talk, we consider the utility that if the output agrees with my preference, I can utility one. It, another natural utility is that everyone put a bet on the output and the winner splits the pool. So we also give a complete characterization of game theoretic fairness under that utility. And yeah, this is basically my talk. Thanks for listening. And any question? Yes. So um, just to be clear, the protocol that you're actually giving is 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 the protocol always like each group uses their trusted authority and then the results of those two trusted authorities go through the like asymmetric variant of the one protocol or is there different protocols for different groups? It's the same group for it. It's the same protocol for two groups. Okay. It's just uh, they have an order. Okay. So like the smaller group, the, uh, the smaller group reveal first and then the larger group reveal later after the smaller group. Thanks, yes. Uh -huh. Can you say what uh, what is K in, in terms of the K trusted authority? What do you set K as in terms of N0 and N1? Um, sure. Do I have that here? Yes, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, for, so uh, given N0 and N1, this is the uh, parameter K0 and K1 will pick. Because like, uh, as you, um, I mean, like the coalition of sites we can tolerate do de does depend on the value, the choice of the parameter K0 and K1. So at the very end, this the problem of finding the game theoretic, uh, finding the largest coalition we can tolerate, like boil, actually boils down to an optimization problem like this. And we just pick K0 and K1 that can maximize T subject to some conditions needed to guarantee fairness. Okay, yeah. Yes. So in this assumption, we assumed that not only we had these groups that we knew about, but we also knew that everybody's utility was identical. So, I'm not sure if this is equivalent to the bet scenario you just had, but like imagine every individual has a different utility for their preferred outcome. So it's all like zero or X, where X be different for every individual. Um, does that, is that equivalent to the betting scenario you said, or is that like a different model? I think that's a different model. Okay. And yeah. We don't know. And that's, um, a, that's further research, right? Yeah, that, that can be further research. <laughs> Yes. If there are more K people, isn't it fair to have a more probability of having K instead of the point? So uh, that's also, I think that's also another like another problem of tossing a bias claim. Right. Protocol that? Uh, yes, actually, our protocol can be used to generalize a protocol that toss a bias claim. Like with pre described bias probability. Just for some more coins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just toss some more uniform coin. Yes. That's a good question. Um, so this so this is the problem of binary coin toss, right? Um, so if we are tossing an n way coin, that becomes leader election. And we do have a result of leader election. But for the coin between, let's say six people want to toss a ternary coin, uh, we don't know that. And it's not a easy generalization of this protocol. I tried and I failed. <laughs> If there aren't any more questions, let's thank okay, okay. Thank you.